If you think about right now, Amazon knows the weight in the grams of every single item they're going to sell you. Now, think about the world, what happens when you charge, if you're UPS, charge by volume. All those air packets that are in your Amazon box are no longer free. So now, how does Amazon do the combinatorial calculation of the volumetric optimization for that box with the bowling ball, USB stick, and carving knife? Incredibly hard problem, fascinating problem. So here's the pricing in real time. Um, anybody know Tractor? That's what they do. They, they track Amazon price changes over time. The top thing is a pair of headphones. The bottom thing is a USB stick. Note how much volatility it is. The uh, green bar is the uh, new item, and used market is the gold underneath. Note that sometimes the new is cheaper than the used. And this is for every item Amazon sells. Just think about the computation that's required to manage this, and then your demand chain and your supply chain now work together. When are we running a promotion on something? When are we going to have too much stuff? When, when do we need to have a sale because the warehouse is filling up? That kind of coordination is very, very in much in early stages in many companies. What are the implications? Um, where does stuff happen? And John talked about it yesterday, this notion of decentralization and recentralization. What happens when everybody's got sensors all over their person or their truck or their machine tool? What happens when you've got Siri in your pocket? Well, Siri has to talk to a cloud-based data center to get the answer. Siri is not in your pocket. Siri is a connection to a cloud data center. So, in fact, we do have smaller and smaller and smaller, more and more and more user devices, but we have bigger and bigger and bigger, more centralized data centers in, in a cloud world. So what gets decentralized and pushed out to the edge? We talked about, for example, music pressing, we talked about movie making. We talked about newspapers over and over again. So decentralization blows apart old business models, but then a lot of things are now getting recentralized. So John's talk yesterday was right on to this and this whole notion of what, what's the edge and what's the core. Um, supply chains are very much playing in that world. What constitutes a moat? What constitutes a competitive barrier to entry that nobody can cross without great pain, great effort? Is it knowledge? Is it location? Is it capital? And in many, many cases, we're finding that these things are very much fungible, and so moats are much more permeable than they used to be. Personalization, for my money, I think the most interesting things happening right now are in prosthetics. I think 3D printing has the possibility, 3D printing and associated technologies, right, not just by itself, has the potential to change the medical device industry just radically. Right now, your local hospital has a very expensive inventory of artificial hip joints and knees. These are made of titanium and expensive advanced materials. They're very expensive to warehouse, and they don't really fit you that well because you're you, you're unique. How soon till we get personalized medical implants? How soon till we get personalized car seats? Everybody's car seat profile is unique. Did you know that? It's as unique as your fingerprint. If I have the right sensors on a car seat, I can tell who you are. So why shouldn't my car seat fit me perfectly? Finally, well-being and jobs. Uh, what do we do when machines do a better job than people at more and more tasks, whether it's driving a truck, whether it's melding metal, whether it's um, calculating derivatives and um, uh, Wall Street portfolios? So this notion of the universal basic income, the guaranteed in individual income, is a fascinating conversation that's just jump-starting in the last few years. That is, you deserve an income for being a person, for being a citizen. And we're going to pay you to be a citizen of our country. Right now, Switzerland is going to consider that at a referendum next month, I believe. 40% of people are expected to vote for it and their well-being. What do we do about all the people who work in those warehouses, the people who can benefit from all these consumer devices, all the radiation we're ingesting? Um, what about who knows about my sensor output? Um, 
I think Salim was right on it, that, that we're going to have to renegotiate a lot of the social contract in light of information abundance down to the genomic level.